Welcome back one and all to another exciting edition of Transformers Reviews. And it's actually the first review of 2024. And yeah, this guy right here, after his original review got lost to cybernetic oblivion when the old hard drive crashed, I swore up and down that I was not going to do this guy's video. However, here we are, because I figured, oh, what the heck, I'll just do it. Just do it! Don't let your dreams be dreams. Oh, and look at that. Old dead memes are creeping into my video. Now, if we take a look at the underside of his wing right here, this is not actually waffling. I looked at the old original Desaurus, and he had very similar detailing on the inside of his wing. Nice work, Hasbro. I appreciate that on this, you didn't cheapen out like you did with the Victory Saber's wings on the back side. So if you all saw my top 10 Legacy Evo figures list, when we got to Jazz, I said that sometimes it's the smallest little details that have the most impact on me. And so you can see here that we're looking at the bottom of Desaurus' foot, and he has one, two, three normal combat ports, which you can go ahead and put a blast effect in there if you wanted to. However, he has one that's different, but still is meant to accommodate one. However, if I was to guess, this is probably more for robot mode than anything. But again, it was just one of those small niche details that I wanted to point out. Now also in that list, I had mentioned that Deathsaurus here is kind of like a mystical fusor because he's got dragon bits, he's got griffin bits, but it also kind of feels like he has a little bit of T-Rex DNA with the arms. Which, speaking of that, did you know that Deathsaurus was actually originally conceived to be a normal retail product? And more than that, he was actually going to be a partial of the studio series Grimlock. And the only reason he got moved over to the HasLab platform was because Star Saber, his arch rival, proved that you could make a Victory Saber at the HasLab level and people will like it. So Desaurus owes his existence as what he is to his arch enemy. And since our boy is rocking his beast mode at the moment, I thought, why not take a look at his two beast companions that he happens to come with? And I figured that we would start off with one that's probably the lamer of the two, because this boy kind of feels like some sort of weird mix between laser beak and dive bomb, and maybe just a hint of Air Razor's DNA in there also. Plus, this guy right here, I mean, I don't think he had much of a chance considering what he transforms into, which we will get to later, but this is probably the best he looks whenever he's not forming an alternate chest for Deathsaurus. And aside from that, your boy's only other function is to be basically set decoration for Deathsaurus's throne. It does everything it is supposed to. Look up in the sky! Is it a tiger? Is it a hawk? No! It's tiger chest and or tiger breast depending upon how you look at it. And uh, I think this boy has definitely a leg up on eagle breast or eagle chest. But I do like the fact that it's basically a, f <laughs> it's a flying tiger. And that's kind of cool because... Uh, man, this makes me just want my tiger hawk really badly, to be honest. However, one thing that people have wondered about this guy is they see the wings detached. And really, that's just so that these gold chrome bits, they were packed separate from, from tiger chest, and they were wrapped just so that the chrome bits would actually be in really good condition. So much like his other chest partner, again, it's doing everything that Desaurus needs it to do, and that's perfectly fine with me. So, you know, we could have compared Star Saber in his jet mode, but I feel that him in his futuristic jet form, it doesn't equate well in regards to comparing his alt mode to that of Desaurus. So it got me thinking that since Desaurus has a sort of mythical alt mode, who would really be able to stack up against him? And of course, it is none other than Transmetal 2 Megatron. And I tell you what, <laughs> it is awesome to see these guys in comparison to each other because for me personally, this guy was my number one pick of 2022, and this guy was my number one pick of 2023. However, imagine what it would be like if these two guys actually teamed up. Oh man, let me say that I dread to think 
of the carnage and the absolute destruction that would result from these guys unleashing their fury across the surface of Cybertron. And no telling how many Autobots and Maximals alike would fall, crush the bits under their mighty heel. However, they will do whatever they have to in order to bring Cybertron under control. In order to bring peace through their tyranny. However, in looking at these guys using the blast effects, I do feel that Desaurus has improved upon something that I feel they did kind of mess up on on Megatron. Now, because they were actually reutilized the TLK Meg's fire blast effect, you can see that it's kind of coming at a weird angle. I always felt that the fire blast effect should be coming out at this angle instead of dropping down kind of weird like that. So like I said, it should be coming out more straight, but it just goes at a weird downward angle. Now that's because they actually implemented the blast effect port in the top part of his beast mode head. That's what leads to that. However, when you look at Desaurus, because they ended up putting it in the bottom part of his jaw, he's able to fire the fire blast effect straight out of his mouth, no matter what angle his head is at. So again, chalk one more up for the HasLab guy. Before we head on to robot mode, there's one last thing that we have to look at here that is ridiculous yet awesome and it is totally nobody's but the sources <laughs> and that is him using the living metal destroying cannon in beast mode and like i said it is kind of silly but i do love that sometimes now the interesting thing is you can go ahead and attach it on either side of his neck that you want to because the two places that it plugs in at is this place right here that little cut that little notch and then you can see that over here he actually has his little t-rex arm plugged into one of the sides of the cannon you do have options metal destroying cannon am i glad that they went ahead and included it as a feature absolutely so with that being said let's go ahead and get this boy into robot mode the transformers will return after these messages now, this is probably not the boy you were expecting to see sitting upon the throne. However, I do have to admit that the Predacon Megatron, even if it is a Decepticon throne, he can definitely rock the look. Now, if it appears as though Megatron is the same color as the throne, you are not exactly wrong because a lot of the similar reds were used to make Desaurus's throne. However, I did want to show you one thing about his throne, in the fact that every one of Desaurus's accessories can actually store cleanly on the back, and the fact that it's mostly hidden from the front, especially when Desaurus is sitting behind the throne, that is one thing that makes it just that little bit more awesome to me personally. And how could I mention such a thing without showing you such a thing? And as we can see, the Lord of Destruction looks excellent sitting upon his throne, which I've always thought if baddies could have a throne and it looks awesome, then why would you not rock the look? Now, what you're seeing right here, unfortunately, is the main thing about Desaurus's management style, is that he has a very Beast Machines Megatron, early MCU Thanos mentality, that he just kind of sits on his throne, hanging around his stronghold. For Megatron, it was the Citadel. For Desaurus, it's the Thunder Arrow. And inevitably, he just leaves it up to his minions to carry out his dirty work. However, as things will inevitably turn out, they mess up bad enough to where Desaurus has to intervene, at which point he takes a later MCU Thanos approach. Fine. I'll do it myself. 
yourself. So typically in fiction, they will show a hero gearing up for a battle. However, I would kind of like to see a bad guy variant, like with this source here, where he's gathering all of his instruments of destruction, hence his title, and because at this point, Desaurus knows that it relies on him to assure Decepticon victory. Oh my gosh, I made a joke and didn't even know it. So our boy Desaurus is finally all armed up, and I felt it was appropriate to kind of show you guys again the initial idea of what they were going to do for Desaurus. I am so glad that we actually got the HasLab over the initial retail partial off of Grimlock. Again, it's a great mold and I love it, but Desaurus needed to be what he is. So definitely I think we dodged a bullet there. And so here we can see the Emperor of Destruction. I don't know why I kept calling him Lord of Destruction. But you can see how he scales with the Transmetal 2 Megatron. And it does not surprise me that he is so much bigger. I mean, the boy from his toes to the top of his head is 11 inches. The one thing that did take me by surprise was actually his sword, which you can see how nicely it slots there at an angle on his back. But when we take a look at the handle of it, instead of it being your standard 5 mil peg, like you would see with a lot of weapons, it's actually using that masterpiece grip style, so that it actually has to go in his hands a very particular way. And here you can see, once the guy has it gripped in his hand, that he looks awesome with this scimitar-esque blade. But if you're wondering, well, how does his stack up to Star Saber? And looking at Star Saber's sword, if any of you have that figure, you know this is not the blade that comes with this boy because it was literally missing like this much length on it. It was very minuscule, which is odd for a dude that has Saber in his name. However, that upgrade kit does put it pretty much on par with the Sword of Desaurus, which is excellent when these boys will be on the shelf locking blades. And when Desaurus actually whips out his flail, you see that he does not waste the opportunity to land a critical strike right there on Victory Saber's right hip. And in person, it's really kind of cool to see this action pose with the flail being like in mid-strike on the hip. Yeah, it's just really awesome. So many Autobots to kill, so little time. And so we can see that when Desaurus utilizes Tiger Chest, as a bow and arrow, oh, he not only looks so sick with it, especially whenever you can see him pulling the arrow from his back, and now that he's got it lined up, he's taking on two girls, which I hate to say this, that as much as I love both Flame War and Air Razor, they are unfortunately outmatched by the Emperor of Destruction. However, we know it will be a valiant battle no matter what. However, the moral of the story is, don't mess with the Emperor of Destruction whenever he wants to go Robin Hood on you. So here we can see Eagle Chest or Eagle Breast, wherever you want to call him in his gun configuration. I did promise that we would get back to this guy. And yeah, it doesn't look cool at all. Plus the other thing is the barrels are too small to even utilize blast effects. I mean, that would have been at least a slightly redeeming feature. And I get, yeah, that may be accurate, but as far as accessories go, I hate to rag on this boy even more, but it's probably the weakest accessory that Desaurus comes with. However, we know this is not the only gun that our boy comes with. And of course, you know I wasn't going to give up the goods right off the bat because this is the grand poobah of his weapons. And uh, I tell you what, <laughs> I thought that Victory Saber's cannon was pretty big. And now seeing Desaurus' living metal destroying cannon yeah, it puts it to shame. Matter of fact, the first time that I did this video, I actually had to use this blast effect. Well, it was his version in the green, but literally you have to have the blast effect to even make this the same length as Desaurus's right here. And definitely out of all the accessories that Desaurus has, probably the living metal destroying cannon is my favorite. 
Second would probably be a tie between his sword and the flail. It, whenever the guy has the cannon out and you have him maybe perhaps in a flight configuration on his base, oh man, it just looks so sick and I am so glad that we have a guy that just looks amazing as he does with everything. Man, they nailed it with this Death Source. And here we can see the big evil boss man sending out some Decepticon grunts to do his bidding, which ultimately is to find a power source that would make him completely unstoppable. The power! The infinite power! Give it to me! Ah! <laughs> Energy is flowing through me as it never did before! My destiny! So everybody, I hope you enjoyed this first review of 2024. As I have said a couple times now, this boy was originally intended to be the last review of 2023. And to come back and do it now, I figured, well, instead of finishing last year off on a bang, as my friend put it, why don't we start 2024 off with a bang? And there is no bigger one than Death Source himself. So until next time, everybody, we'll see you in another review.